Hey, this is Mike Renoir, Northwest Fight Scene, NWFightScene.com. I'm here on the phone with Brian Nero, uh, head of your fight coming up this Saturday uh, at the Emma Queen Casino Tacoma for the Cage Sport MMA Interim Lightweight Belt. Man, how are you feeling? Going good, man. Made it through camp without getting too banged up. My weight's looking pretty good going into this week, and I think it's a really good matchup for me. Now, uh, you fought... Justin Harrington earlier this year, uh, split decision loss to him. He's the champion. Uh, what was the reasoning that, that you couldn't fight him first? Uh, the reason I got was that, honestly, uh, SFL and Cage Sports came out with a top five ranking in the Northwest. And in lightweight, they had Justin Harrington as the top guy in the region. And then the five guys below him, I wasn't even mentioned in there. So then from there, we kind of called out like, hey, what's the deal? I had a, I think, a very arguable loss to Justin Harrington. In my opinion, I thought I won that fight. Judges didn't agree. So then what we decided to set up is a, basically a number one contender sort of deal between me and the guy who was ranked next after uh, Justin, which was Bobby. So now uh, you're looking at Bobby. What do you know about him? What are your thoughts about Bobby as an opponent? Um, I looked at fighting him a year ago. They ended up dropping out of the fight. I'm not sure if it was due to injury or illness or what the deal was. So it's a fight that I, looking at over a year ago, I've been okay with. Um, from what I understand, he kind of favors himself more of a jits guy, which doesn't worry me. I train with some of the best jiu-jitsu athletes in the Northwest. In fact, jiu-jitsu is over 20 black belts deep. So I constantly have amazing ground guys back to me. Right. Uh, you're a brown belt, up, right? Uh, yes, sir. I've been brown belt for about a year and a half now. So I feel confident with my skills on the ground, top or bottom positions. On the feet, he is a little bit lengthier than me. But from what I've seen in all his videos, he's not too willing to engage. He doesn't look like he likes to get hit. So he's usually backpedaling and throwing some kicks in there. So I feel like with what hasn't worked on my stand-up, I shouldn't have a problem with him on my feet either. So... Wherever he likes to take the fight, I'm willing to go so. All right, all right. And obviously, uh, you envision your hand being raised. Any predictions? Um, I'm hoping that this is a fight that I can work on starting the fight a little bit quicker, a little faster paced. I know I've got good cardio that showed itself, and, you know, the five rounder with Harrison and other uh, title fights that I've done in the past. So. I'm, I'm really hoping that I can just turn on the switch a little bit earlier this fight, get it over and done with quick, and show that, you know, I can come out of the gates fast, too. Right, right. Now, uh, obviously, uh, you talk about, you know, no one wants to look past the fight, but you actually have another title fight lined up. It is March 11th. Prime Fighting 9, you're going to fight their uh, lightweight champion, Joey Gomez, the Tasmanian Devil. Uh, talk about that fight. Uh, yes, sir. Uh, so guy coming out of uh, BJ Penn's camp in Hawaii. I believe he's ranked the second uh, pro lightweight in Hawaii, not on uh, any major Olympic belt or UFC. So he's definitely a tough opponent. Uh, again, I feel, even though he's coming from such a prestigious uh, jiu-jitsu gym, looking at his ground game, I think I've got the edge on him as far as the jiu-jitsu aspect goes. He uh, looks like a tough, well round guy. He's got some solid strikes. He got a quick knockout against Mo B for the title, but I'm not too worried about his power. I've, I've proven that I've got a solid jaw, and I'm starting to work uh, at Burke Camp now, a very high-level Muay Thai gym in the area. So hopefully by then my stand-up will be even sharper. Okay, okay. And talk about that now. You, you turned pro 2015, you know, 2010 to 2014, undefeated as an amateur. Turned pro last year, three wins, two and one this year so far. Uh, how have you seen your development, like, with each, pro, each fight as a pro? How have you seen yourself develop? Um, I always try to put myself out and work on areas that I need to. Obviously, when I feel like it's a very tough matchup, I try to bring my A game. But in other aspects, if I'm trying to work on leg locks, I try throwing those out there. If I'm trying to work on my standing, I'll be more willing to stand with the opponent than just go to maybe a comfort zone on the ground would be. So I'm always trying to work on improving on a specific area. I don't want to be the same fighter I am now two years down the road. Right. Right. 
Now, uh, what are your goals? I mean, you know, obviously you have long-term goals. You, you're, you're a definite prospect to, to go up in, in the rankings and in the sport. Uh, where do you see yourself in two, three, four years? Uh, two, three, four years. I really hope I'm part of uh, some of the big shows. You know, the 1A and 1B is like UFC or Bellator. I know that's a very big climb right there, but I feel that with these two title fights here, if I win both of them, they'll give me a rematch against Harrington to prove that I can beat that guy. Um, and I'll be defending the prime title as well. So it looks like it'll just be a bunch of you know, 25 minute long uh, title fight wars coming up. And then hopefully with some of that uh, 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 notoriety that I gained from winning those belts and defending them, uh, some of those big organizations will start looking at me to pick me up. Right on, right on. Uh, let us switch it up just a little bit here. Uh, I know you, you, you're, you do a lot of coaching, is that right, yourself? Yes, sir. Talk Fortunately, about uh, at the level I'm at, we can't make a living just fighting. That's always the dream here down the road. But no, uh, my day job is coaching and a personal trainer. I love doing that and helping other people reach goals that they didn't think they could reach themselves. Mm -hmm. are, are you teaching uh, mostly adults? Or are you teaching kids or kind of a mix? A uh, bit of a mix. It's been mostly adults in, uh, re in the last recent years. But I'll occasionally train some high school kids and some younger kids around that age group. Uh, I coach for the most part out of Impact Jiu-Jitsu. I've been doing a MMA class called Fight Club over at Nike headquarters this last term, and it looks like I'll be turning into a job as a trainer over there next year. Well, awesome. So it'll be really cool to have access to all the cool um, toys Nike's got over there and some very high-level uh, professional athletes and people who work with those athletes to bring out the best. Well, perfect. Hey, I appreciate your time, Brian. Uh, you got any sponsors for this upcoming fight? Yes, sir. Uh, so many people I want to thank. So, obviously, first and foremost, Impact Jiu-Jitsu has done an awesome job getting me ready since day one and helped me develop the skills and keep them sharp that I've needed. Impact Performance Training over there with Dewey Nielsen has done a great job of giving me that cardio tank that I need in my fights and taught me everything that I know as far as what I teach as a trainer. Triple A heating and cooling, they've been a big, big help helping me through these fight camps with a lot of help. If you guys are looking for some heating issues you need taken care of, they're the guys to call. Got the Sara, uh, Guy and Hemp Gear, they've also been tremendous helping me by giving me some really top-notch training equipment and avenues to train with some good guys. Dethrone Royalty, again, they gave me a bunch of awesome apparel. They just hooked me up with some awesome play here today. I think about half my wardrobe is from Dethrone. <laughs> so if anyone's looking for a little last-minute Christmas gift, head their way. They got some really sick gear. Outside that, we have a bunch of other guys go about bringing some funeral home, pineapple smash, the poor physical therapy. Those guys have been keeping me in one piece here for as long as I can remember. You can't get to a fight camp without being all beat up. So those guys have really helped keep me together. And then, uh, let's see, last one, Bridge City Fight Shop. They've been helping me out, giving me some gear as well. Just as we burn through gloves and chains and you name it, super quick training twice a day, six days a week. Right. So um, and then last one, uh, Progressive Solutions. They've done an awesome job helping me as well. They work in mostly doing treatment for um, Alcohol Anonymous and other drug-related rehab programs. So they're really helping other individuals get on the right path. Awesome. Awesome. Well, hey, again, Brian, appreciate your time. Uh, look forward to the fight. You're fighting Bobby McIntyre for the interim lightweight belt cage forward MMA this coming Saturday, December 17th, uh, 2016, the Emma Queen Casino. Uh, are, are, do you know if they're streaming it or not? Yes, uh, from what I heard, they'll be streaming out live on YouTube. Oh, yeah. so you guys will be able to catch it. Now, I was trying to figure out what exact, where exactly we can find on YouTube. I'm not 100% sure if it's going to be under Cage Sport or SFL. So stay posted. Um, you can check out my Facebook, Instagram, or Twitter account, Brian Nero, and I will have that link posted up there as soon as I find out. But even if you guys can't make the drive up, you should be able to jump on YouTube and catch the fight live. Awesome. Awesome. Well, thank you, sir. 
Uh, enjoy your time uh, this week uh, leading up to the fight, and we'll see you in there Saturday. Yes, sir. Thank you for your time, and I really.